What's up everyone, welcome back to another episode of AWS Tutorial and today I'm going to show you how to build a facial recognition app on AWS. So this is how the architectural diagram for the app is going to look like. It may look a little bit intimidating at the first glance but it's actually pretty simple and I'm going to go through everything step by step and we're going to build everything from scratch. So if you follow along at the end of the tutorial, it's going to be worth it. So this is how the app is going to work. So right now imagine that you have a company and for your company, you have an office for your employees to come in every day to work. Um, and before they can come, come into the office, you need them to authenticate. So in the, in the old way of doing that is that you give everyone a badge and then they carry that every day. And then before they, they enter the building, they will scan the ID and authenticate them into the office. Um, but with AI and everything going on right now, obviously we're not going to do it that way. So we're going to use employee's face as the ID and we use that information to determine whether we are going to let them in or not. So this is how it's going to work. So whenever we have new employees join the company, we're going to take a nice picture of them and then we're going to upload a picture to an S3 bucket, which will trigger a Lambda function called Registration Lambda that will index the image using AWS recognition and that generates a unique key and then we're going to save that as a recognition ID along with the employee's first name, last name, and then all the information that you may think is relevant. But for this tutorial, we're just going to keep it simple. We're just going to have the first name and last name. Um, so that is called the registration because we are registering the employee into our database. And after that is done, each morning or every day when people, is whether it's employee, visitors, or just strangers that try to enter the company, uh, the first thing that it's going to do is that it's going to take, take a picture of that person. And then we have a React.js app uh, for the front end that takes the image. And then that's going to call the API gateway to upload the image to an S3, S3 bucket. Technically, you don't have to save the image into an S3 bucket. But I think it's a good idea to do it because later on, if you want to go back and see who has visited the building and how that person looks like, you can just go over to your S3 bucket and look at the records that way. And then the API gateway, or rather the React app is going to call the API gateway again, which will call a Lambda function to get the image from S3. And then it's going to call recognition using the same algorithm to index the image. And then it's going to check our database to see if um, that employee exists. And if it does, it's going to return the first name and last name. And if it doesn't, just going to, going to simply tell the front end that, okay, this person does not, does not belong to our employee database. So don't let them in. So that is the whole flow. This is the second flow. Uh, we call it authentication flow. And that is the architecture diagram that we're going to build today from scratch. So without further ado, let's get to it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create two S3 buckets. One is to host the employee pictures, and then the other one is to host the visitor pictures. Technically, you can just use one bucket for both of them, just two folders. But for simpler explanations or implementations, I'm just, I'm just going to create two of them separately, just so that we don't have to configure the path and stuff. So let's go to AWS console and create them. OK, so right now I'm on the home page of the AWS console. So let's type in S3 and then create bucket. So the first one, we're going to call it, let's say US East 1 as the region, keep it X lock or public access, enable bucket visioning, and then keep it as manage key, S3 manage key, enable, create bucket. Oh wow, already exists. Let's do storage like that. Okay, and now let's create a second one. And then we're going to do the same thing for this one. Create buckets. All right, so they are done. We just finished step number one, and now let's move on to step number two, which is to create a registration lambda. Um, and before we can do that, we need to create a Lambda function, I mean, uh, the IAM role for the Lambda function to use so that you can access the S2 bucket, AWS recognition, DynamoDB, and API gateway. So let's go back to the console. Rows, create row, and then we're going to check Lambda because the Lambda function is going to use it. 
silver policies. Uh, let's do CloudWatch log because we want to be able to see the logs in CloudWatch. CloudWatch logs, full access. And then we want it to be able to access S3. So just do full access for simplicity. And then DynamoDB because we want it to be able to save and read from it. Uh, just give it full access uh, for simplicity. And then rec recognition and then full access as well. And then hit next. Make sure that we have all four of them. Uh, give it a name. Lambda row, something like that. Hit create. Okay, so that is done. And now let's go to the Lambda function console to create our Lambda function for the registration process. Create function. Employee registration, something like that. We're going to choose Python. And apparently that's the latest version. Um, let's keep it as default. And then for the execution row, we're going to use the one that we just created, which is that one. And then hit create. And then let's change some of the default configurations. Let's do 500 and then default timeout. Uh, I think one minute should be enough. Typically it just takes a few seconds, um, but I just want to increase that just in case. And now let's configure our um, S3 trigger. So as we upload employee images to the S3 bucket, it's going to trigger our Lambda function automatically to um, register the employee and save that into our database. So let's go back to the function overview, add trigger, select the source, S3. And then it's the employee image storage. Make sure you choose the, uh, the right one. Uh, or object creation, hit add. Oh, obviously it wants me to acknowledge that. So hit add. Okay, so that is done. So whenever we upload the image to the S3 bucket, it's gonna trigger our length of function. Okay, so let's go back to the architecture diagram. Uh, so right now we have the buckets created and then we hook it up uh, one of them with the lambda function and obviously the lambda function is not done yet we still need to write a code for it but before we do that let's create our uh, database uh, DynamoDB uh, so that we can write our lambda code while we are waiting for the DynamoDB to be provisioned so let's type in DynamoDB hit create a table uh, give it a name I just call it employee and then for the partition key, yeah, I'm just gonna call it recognition ID. Um, that's what we're gonna use. We can just leave everything as default, hit create. All right, while it's being created, uh, we can write our Lambda function, write a code to register our employees once we upload the image. Um, but we're not gonna do it here in the uh, console here. We're gonna use VS code uh, to write a code and then copy and paste it over. And okay, so right now I have VS Code open a empty folder called tutorial. So let me just create a Python file called employee registration.py and then we can write our code here. First thing we're gonna do is gonna import photo three. That's what we're gonna use to call the um, AWS services. And then we're gonna define S3 as the client S3. That's what we're gonna to use to call S3 buckets. And then recognition is this, recognition. Oh, I spelled it wrong. Um, so it's with the K, recognition with K, which is a weird spelling, but that's how AWS calls it. Recognition. And then we're gonna specify a region name to be US East one, because that's what I'll be using and then we're gonna specify our 
table name for our for our Dynamo DB, and I believe we just call it employee. Let's make sure. Yeah, that's right, employee, and it's done. And then we're gonna define our Dynamo DB client. It's also from photo three US is one. Do the same thing here, and now we can instantiate our employee table. The table employee table name like that, so that in our methods we can just use that directly. And now we are ready to define our handler, lambda handler, uh, which takes in an event and context parameter. First thing first, we're going to print out what the event object is, just in case we have any errors, we can see uh, what's going on there. And then we're going to get the bucket name. So remember, this lambda function is being triggered by the S3 bucket once we upload employee images to it. So once it gets invoked, the bucket name and file names is going to be um, in our event object. So we're just going to extract it here. So event records, which is the first one, always the first one. And then S3 bucket, and then the name of the bucket. And then the key, uh, which is the image name object key. Um, so after we got the bucket name and the image name uh, of the employee, we are ready to ex or index the image. So index image. We're going to define this function later, uh, so don't worry about it. So what it does is it takes in the bucket name and then the key name of the image, and then we're going to index that to generate a unique um, recognition ID. And then we're going to save that into our DynamoDB, along with the first name and last name, obviously. So we're going to write this function later. Uh, don't worry about it now. So let's print out the response, just in case we need to debug, debug it. Oh, yeah, let's do exception. I'm just going to print it out for now, but uh, you should handle your error. And then I'm just going to withdraw it. So one thing to note here is even though we, we, even though we get a response here successfully, it doesn't mean that the indexing is successful. It can be a, a, a fail response. So we need to handle that or we need to check that to make sure that it's, it's a successful index in order to move forward. So if in our response, we can get response metadata and then HTTP status code. If we check that and it's equal to 200, that means it's a successful indexing. And if it's successful, we're going to get the face ID from it. Face records, the first one, and then face, and then face ID. So this is going to be the uh, unique uh, recognition ID that we're going to use to identify uh, the people. So that's going to be unique using the algorithm. And now we're going to get the employee um, name, the first name and last name from just the name of the image. Uh, so the key right here is uh, going to be the image name. So the, the way that we're going to tell who the person is, is that we're going to name the image to be the first name, underscore, and then last name, and then dot JPEG or something like that. That way we can extract the, the naming information from the image name. That's how we know who this recognition ID belongs to. So name is going to equal to key dot split dot so the first one and then we're going to split the name uh, into first and last name what are you and then first name is equal to name zero the first index and then the last name is equal to the second index of it and then register employee what it means is uh, save the employee to the, our database which takes in the face id first name and last name and then we're just going to return the response. Why not? Okay, so the main method is done. Now let's define uh, the index employee image function and the register employee function. So let's copy that. So this is very simple. Um, so just response equal to, we're going to use the recognition uh, service. 
index face faces actually and then it's gonna take in an image s3 object so it's reading from s3 and then it's gonna take in a second parameter called collection id we're gonna call it employees uh, so this one is actually gonna be what we're gonna create next we're gonna create this later uh, to store our recognition id using our recognition cli to do it okay so that is done and we just simply respond or return the response okay so that method is done and now let's create our register employee method so remember we already defined or instantiate our employee table earlier now we just we can just use it directly primary key we said that we're going to set it to recognition id which is a string so we're going to copy that which is the face id okay that is done and now we're going to copy all this and then paste that into our lambda function and hopefully i don't have any typos here so go back to the console paste deployed okay so update is successful and i don't spot any obvious mistakes here so remember we said that we're going to create this later on and now it's later on so let's create it now but before we do that let's go back to our architecture diagram to see what we have so we have the s2 bucket we link it up with our lambda function and we wrote a code for it and then we create our dynamo db and now let's uh, use recognition to create our uh, collection ID, which is called employee, so that we can use that in our Lambda function to do the indexing. But one thing about recognition is that I couldn't find a way to create that in the AWS console, so we have to use the AWS CLI to do it. So if you don't have the AWS CLI installed in your machine, uh, you should go to the AWS website and follow the instructions based on your operating system to install it and if you install everything successfully you should be able to do something like this AWS version it should tell you that what the version number is so after you install the AWS CLI you need to configure your computer to connect that to your AWS account uh, with the access key and secret access key. I'm going to include a inst instruction down below in terms of how to do it. Um, but I already have this set up, so I'm not going to go through all that. So now let's create our collection ID using the uh, recognition service. So we're going to do AWS recognition and then create collection, collection ID. We say that we're going to call it employees and then we're going to give you a region. We're going to do us is one for everything and then hit enter okay so that is done and we created the collection id to be employees and make sure that your aws account id matches with what you have in your console 2795 2795 that's right um so right now let's go back to the aws console so we did this already and now we're ready to test it um, our first flow so let's go back to our architecture diagram so we're going to upload a uh, employee image to our s2 bucket and then it's going to trigger the lambda function to call the recognition to index the image and then save the recognition id and first name into our database so before this tutorial i created a few images um, for our employees or oh, i downloaded them i didn't create them so the first one is bill gates and then second one is Elon Musk. Third one is Jeff Bezos. And then Mark Zuckerberg. And then we have Sandra Pachai. So notice that I, I do the naming convention as the first name underscore um, last name and then it's the image extension. Um, that way we can just get the first names and last name from the image name. Uh, so let's upload them into our S3 bucket. So we go back to the console. So employee image storage. So we're gonna hit upload, add file. Um, so let's upload one of them first to make sure that it works. So upload successfully. And now let's go back to our 
AWS console, hit monitoring, uh, view cloud watch logs. Let's hope that we don't have any errors. Okay. Ah, that's an error. Has no attribute table. DynamoDB has no attribute table. Let's see what's wrong. Ah, okay. So instead of clients, it should be resource. That is a unique thing about DynamoDB. Uh, it should be fine now. Okay, so let's upload that one more time. Okay, so it seems like it's successful. And right now, if we go to DynamoDB, explore items, we should be able to see a recognition ID here, which is a unique um, UUID, and then first name Bill, and then last name Gates. Um, so now let's upload everything or everything else or other employees. We have a very strong employee base here. So it's going to process, I guess, of uh, five of them at the same time. And it shouldn't take very long. It should just take, I don't know, a few seconds. And right now, if I refresh the database, I should be able to see everyone here. Okay, so we're able to see uh, Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, and others. So five of them. Okay, cool. So it seems like everything's working uh, for the first flow, for the registration one. And now let's build out the second flow, which is the authentication part of it. Um, so next, we're going to create a Lambda function called authentication fun uh, Lambda. And then we're going to write a code for it. So let's go to the console create function and we're going to call it employee authentication same thing we're going to use python for it and permission we're going to do the same thing we're going to use the iam row that we just created create function we're going to do the same thing we're going to configure some basic things here Let's do 500 and one minute for it. And now let's write our code in VS Code and then copy and paste it over, just like what we did here. So employee authentication.py. So this is gonna be used by the front end. Uh, so other than Bodo3, we will need to import JSON as well. Uh, just so that we can have a nice return object that the front end can be used. Uh, let's just copy over some of the things here because all these are going to be the same. One more thing is the bucket name. Uh, it's it's going to be different. We're going to use the second bucket that we create. No longer this one, uh, it's the visitor one. So we're going to define it here and then we're going to define our lambda handler function and the same thing it picks in an event and context input we're going to print out the event and now we're going to extract the uh, request parameters from the, uh, the front end which is the only thing that we're going to do is just the object key uh, like what which Im uh, which image we're going to get from s3 and that comes from our event object and we're going to set that as a query string parameter and then we're just going to call it object key um, that is something that we defined um, so we have control over it and then we're going to read the image from the sd bucket let's call it uh, in bytes get object bucket is equal to and then key and then we're going to take the body of it and do a read on it that's how we get the bytes and the reason why we need to uh, do it this way is that recognition is expecting a binary um, data type uh, for the images for it to process and then we're going to call the um, recognition service and we're going to search faces by image and we're going to define our collection id which is employees so it has to use the same uh, collection ID that we use in the registration uh, service or lender. 
otherwise it's not gonna work and then image byte and that is the image byte so after the response comes back we're gonna go through all the matches phase that we have in the index or collection phase matches and that's all the possible matches that we have um, in our collection we're gonna print out what it is I mean what the phase ID is along with the confidence score and now we're gonna check our database to, to see if any of our employees matches with the phase so phase is equal to employee table dot get recognition ID which is the face ID and then we're gonna check if we get anything back from it uh, in our database if yes we're gonna print out person found and we're just gonna print out the item and then we're gonna return a response so we're gonna do build response and we're gonna define this method later uh, so don't worry about it now and that would take into a status code and we're gonna say it's 200 and then a body uh, so let's return a message and call it success and then we're gonna return the first name of the person found and that's gonna be this and then do the same thing for last name of the person found like that and if it doesn't find anyone in our database we're just gonna print out something like person cannot be recognized something and then we're gonna return a uh, 403 not found to the, the client 403 and then message we're gonna say something like person not found or something like that and now we're gonna define this method it should be pretty simple it takes in a status code and a body uh, which can be none if it doesn't pass anything so we're going to define response status code status code and then headers content type uh, we're just going to do application json and then the next one is going to be very important because we're going to define the access allow control origin to be allow everything so that when we call this api from our react app it's going to go through so access control allowed origin to be everything and now we're going to check the body if it's not none we're going to set the uh, response body to be json defy doms body and then we're going to return the response object to the client and i have a typo here response okay that should be everything and now let's copy this and paste it into our lambda function so go back to code, delete everything and paste. Okay, looks good to me. So hit deploy. Okay, so the lambda function is done here. Let's go back to the architecture diagram. So right now we have everything. So the next step is to create our API gateway that will help us uh, call the um, lambda function and also upload the image to an S3 bucket. But before we can create the API gateway, we need to create an IAM role for it to use so that it can access the S3 bucket uh, to upload the image. So let's go to the console, go back to IAM, and then we're gonna create a role. So AWS service, and then we're gonna type in API gateway because the API gateway is gonna use it. Check that, hit next. So by default, it's going to attach the CloudWatch log permission to it. Um, so we're going to create a row and then we're going to attach a uh, policy to it. So give it a name. Uh, let's just call it facial recognition API gateway row. Something like that. Hit create. Okay, so it's successful. So let's search for that. So it's that one. So let's uh, attach a policy to it. So hit add permission, attach policy, create a policy. So choose a service. We're going to type in S3 because it needs access to put object. Uh, so put object is right here. So check it. And then we're going to specify a ARN. So we're going to add the ARN of the S3 bucket. So we're going to choose the uh, visitor image storage for it. So we're going to copy this, go back to the policy, 
so bucket name and then i guess we allow any of the uh, the inner photos so this way we only allow this row to access this bucket um, to restrict access to it for security reasons so add arms hit next policy name facial recognition s3 put policy create okay uh, it was created successfully so right now let's attach the policy hit enter nothing maybe hit refresh visual okay so it's right here so add permission and now it has two policies to it okay and it says policy was successfully attached to the row and now we are ready to create our api gateway and use this iam row for it so let's go to api gateway so on the home page of the API gateway, you have the option to choose from four types of APIs and we're going to use the REST API for it. So make sure that you choose the REST API, otherwise it's not going to be the same. Uh, so hit OK. And obviously we're going to choose a new API. So we're just going to call it Facial Recognition API. Keep everything as default and original. Hit Create. So the first thing that we are going to do is that we're going to create an endpoint for uploading the image into the S3 bucket, uh, which is this one. So the client can call it and then upload the image into S3 bucket. So create resource, so bucket. And then in here, we need to do a curry braces to it. Uh, that's how we reference the, the parameter. And then make sure you that check enable API gateway course. Create resource. And then underneath, we're going to create a, another resource called file name and same thing we're going to do this and create a resource so we actually have a uh, separate video that talk about how to uh, how to do this in detail how to upload files into s2 bucket using api gateway um, i'm going to put a link down below so if you're interested you can check it out for more details and uh, the theories behind it but in this tutorial i'm just gonna focus on the implementation part of it and then um, underneath we're going to put a method called put so make sure you do put otherwise it's not gonna work post is not gonna work I tried that and we're gonna choose AWS service and the region so this is very important so make sure that you just use the same region for everything s3 and then we're gonna do put here as well and then do a path overwrite and then in the path override, we're going to do the bucket slash file name. That is our path and execution row. And that's the row that we just created, but it doesn't allow you to search for it. Uh, so I have to go back to the IAM row to search for that specifically. So is that one. Let me copy it on. Go back here and paste it and then uh, allow pass through and use the port timeout hit save and then next we're going to do integration and then under url path parameter so in here we're going to add a path to it so the name of it is going to be bucket and we're going to take that from our path parameter to be method request and then path and then hit the check mark and then we are going to add another one called file name and same thing for the file name and then hit ok the check mark so that is done and then next we're going to scroll down a little bit here to the settings and in here scroll all the way down uh, under binary type here we're gonna allow image in jpeg type and image in png uh, but you can allow other formats if you want to um, but i think we're just going to use jpeg and then we're going to hit save here Okay, let's go back to resources. And now we are done with this path here. And now we're gonna create another endpoint for the client to call the Lambda function to get the image from the uh, S3 bucket and then do the indexing and stuff. So let's go back to the root. Actually, before we do an anything, uh, we're gonna do this, enable course. And then in here, we're gonna create another resource we're going to call it employee let's so check this and then 
we're going to create a method called get and then we're going to use the lambda integration make sure that is the same region as the uh, lambda function that you created it in yeah that's why i said use make sure that you use the same region for everything just that just makes life a lot easier then make sure you check the lambda proxy integration here as well and then search for the lambda function employee authentication because that's the one that we try to connect to authentication lambda hit save hit ok ok that is it this one's pretty simple and do the same thing here enable course and then we can do deployed api new stage let's just do dev deploy and that is it. That is the API endpoint that we're going to use in our uh, front end to call these two operations. Okay, so the API is all set. I mean, the API gateway is all set. And right now, we are ready to move on to the next step, which is to create a React app to connect everything. After we're done with that, we're ready to test everything out um, from end to end. And that is the last step of this application. So bear with me. We're almost done here. Okay, so right now I'm back to VS Code. Uh, so let's create our React front end to connect everything. So I'm gonna go to Terminal, New Terminal, and then we're gonna use NPX to create our React app. So if you don't have NPX installed into your machine, you can go to this page and then uh, just do this command to install it. It's pretty simple. So what I'm gonna do is NPX create React app and then give the app a name. I'm just going to do facial recognition app or something like that, but you can call it whatever you want. Okay, so after a few minutes, the app is created successfully. Um, we don't need the lambda code anymore now, so I'm going to close it. And as you can see, it creates a completely new folder here called facial recognition app that contains all the React code. So let's cd into the working directory and then we're gonna start the app to make sure that it's working first okay so it's working uh, so right now let's go back to vs code do a control c to kill the app and then we're gonna delete everything that we don't need uh, just for cleanness uh, we don't need these ones just want to keep the project clean uh, for the tutorial because we don't need this we don't need this. Okay, so there's the bare minimum of our um, React app. Let's test it out one more time to make sure that it's still working. Okay, so we didn't break anything. Um, so that's good. And right now, let's start coding our facial recognition front end. Okay, so in the header, let's do a uh, h2 tag that says and then we're going to have a form tag because we're going to take into the inputs for uh, to upload image uh, for the visitors. And then on submit, we're going to define uh, this function later on, just send image because we're going to send the image after we take the image of the uh, visitor, we're going to send it to our Lambda function on AWS to authenticate it to see if it's our one of our employees. And we're gonna define that later on. And we're gonna have a input type is gonna be a file because we're gonna upload a image name. Yeah, just call it image, why not? Make sure you don't need this. And then on change, we're gonna have a arrow function here. And we're gonna do a set image except the target is gonna be the file. And this is gonna be setting our image state uh, because we need that to be updated anytime that we do an operation on our web website. So let's define that in the beginning. So cons image set image. We're gonna do a use state. Yeah, that imports for you automatically. And we're gonna set the initial value to be uh, just empty. And then, we're gonna have a button and the type is gonna be submit. Um, we're gonna say authenticate or something. Okay, so that is the form that we're gonna use to upload our image. And then we're gonna, underneath that, we're gonna have a diff to show image upload successful or fail message. 
and we can have that as a state variable as well uh, just so that it can change depending on uh, what operation or what result we're getting let's just call it upload result message and we're going to define that the same way as this and then we're going to set the initial message to be please upload an image to authenticate okay that looks good and then uh, underneath the message we're gonna just display whatever image was uploaded to our system so that we can see what it is so we're gonna have a image tag here we don't need this just that is enough and for the source so i know in in our authentication system uh, we typically use a camera to take the picture and then um, upload that to our app and then the app is going to use that image to display uh, but since we're not going to use a camera to take a picture in real time we're just gonna we're just gonna create it uh, inside our app uh, for demo purposes so under source when we're gonna create a new folder called visitors and then underneath here we're gonna have um, a bunch of like visitor images that we're gonna uh, check by our system to see if they are one of our employees um, in the database so we're gonna do this require and then it's gonna be visitors and we're just gonna use a variable called visitor name uh, which is just the image name uh, that we're gonna have uh, so that is gonna be pretty simple that's how we're gonna name our visitors and then if there's nothing we're gonna do just do visitors like that and then we can set our image height to be let's say 250 and the width also to be 250 that should be enough okay so right now let's define our functions so the first one is send image so we're going to do function send image which takes in an event so we're going to do that so it's not going to refresh oh one more thing we need to set that as a state variable as well uh, so we're gonna do it here first visitor name set visitor name and uh, to instantiate it let's do a placeholder.jpg and I actually have a placeholder image prepared uh, so I'm just gonna drag and drop that into our folder that looks like this okay so in here the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set the visitor name to be whatever the image name is you may ask right now it's like okay image is never set uh, but it's actually not so the way that we do it is so once we upload the image it's gonna call this function set image uh, that is gonna set the name of it as well so the image and the name of it it's already available at this point and then right now we're gonna define a visitor image name that we're gonna use when we upload that to s3 uh, we can just do a uuid for it and obviously we need to require that okay so next uh, we're gonna call our api gateway to upload our image to s3 uh, just for records so typically for calling apis in react i would use axios uh, because it's better uh, but for this demo i'm just gonna use fetch because it's already built in we don't have to add like external libraries to it uh, just to make it less complicated so i'm gonna do fetch and then we're gonna get the url from api gateway so let's go back here and then in our dev stage and that is our api gateway endpoint um, you may want to define it a different way um, i just copy and paste it here uh, just for simplicity and then remember in our endpoint we said that we're going to do a slash bucket and then slash file name so let's get our bucket name uh, which is the visitor bucket so do a slash bucket name and then the file name is going to be whatever we set the visitor image name to be and we're going to add a jpeg at the end oops there shouldn't be anything inside here we're going to define method and remember we said that we're going to use put that is a put method it has to be put here and then headers content type we're using image jpeg um, that's how we define it to be and then the body is whatever the image is 
So the image variable was set in here, set image. Okay, so that is our upload API call. And now we're gonna get the response back and then we're gonna do the next operation, which is gonna be an async method call. And we're gonna define an arrow function here. So after we upload that, we are gonna call the authentication API to authenticate if the visitor is part of our employee database. So let's go back to our architecture diagram. So what we just did was after our user upload our image into the front end, the API gate, which is we're gonna call the API gateway to upload that into our S3 bucket. And right now, after that is done, we're gonna uh, call the API gateway again to call the Lambda function to fetch the image from the S3 bucket and then check if it's one of our employees uh, using recognition and check the database in DynamoDB. And uh, we're gonna define the authentication method uh, later on. So let's just define a response. And then it's gonna pass in the visitor image name, which was defined here, because that's what we uploaded to our S2 bucket. And then if the response comes back, we're gonna check if it's successful. We can just say message equal to success. Typically, you would check the res response like status code uh, to see if it's successful. But I don't remember how to do that in the fetch card. Uh, so I'm just gonna check the message, but uh, you can look it up when you have time to figure out how to check the status code instead of the response message, because it's a better practice to do it uh, that way to use the status code to check. But for this demo, I'm just gonna check the message instead. So if it's successful, we're gonna set the upload result message. Uh, we're gonna set it to be, let's do hi, so in our response body, we would have a first name and append it with the last name. Because remember in our Lambda function, uh, in the response, we say that we have a message called success, first name, and then last name. Uh, so we're just ex extracting those information. Uh, we can say something like, welcome to work. Hope you have a productive day today or something like that. And we can have a else statement if it's not successful. Uh, we also set a message. We can say authentication failed. This person is not an employee or something like that. Actually, let's have an other uh, state variable, which is a boolean call is authenticate or not. And instantiate that as a false to begin with. And then in here, we can say set auth. We're going to set the variable to be true here. And if not, we're going to set it to be false. Uh, we're going to use that later on, so bear with me. But let's finish this first. And then if there's an error, we're just going to catch it. And we're going to set auth to be false uh, because there's an error. Obviously, we're not going to authenticate it. And then uh, set the message to be there is an error during the authentication process. Please try again. And then let's log out <laughs> the error, but you need to deal with it yourself. Okay, and now let's define our authenticate method here, which is an async function. So async authenticate. So this one is going to be calling the uh, API gateway that uh, calls the Lambda function for authenticate. So the same idea, we need to get the, um, the URL. So, which is the same thing here. And obviously you can parameterize it. Um, so we're going to do, let's define a request URL first. And remember, we need to append employee at the end. And then we need to have a uh, query parameter, search params. And remember we said that we're gonna have something called object key. So that's what we're doing, query string parameter, which is the visitor image name JPEG. And then we are going to do the request here using a fetch function again, which is an await fetch request URL and then method, which is a get, because that's a get method here. 
and then headers except application json content type it's also application json and then in our return a response we're just gonna simply JSONify it and then with our data which is the response body we're just simply gonna return that to whoever is calling it and if there's an error uh, we're just gonna cancel that locket okay so that is almost done so one more thing so remember that we defined a new state variable called is auth like is authenticated or not um, we can use that to set our csc uh, in the upload result message here so we can do class name and we can check uh, if it's auth success if not failure okay so what that means is that we're going to set the uh, css class of the message to be a success if it's authenticated and if it's not it's going to be failure um, and then we're going to define this class in the css css file uh, success we're just going to make it green and then failure is going to make the text red i think that's pretty intuitive okay so right now let's go to app.csc and do some basic css uh, i think that's what we call it right app class yeah uh, let's do some margin top to RAM so that it's not really touching the very top of it. And then text align, uh, center, because we want to center everything. And then success, uh, padding. I think one RAM is enough. And we said that we want the color to be green. Oh, it should be like that. And then on the failure class, we're going to do something similar except the color is going to be red and yeah that should be everything we are ready to test it okay let me pause the video for a little bit here because i made a few mistakes in my code earlier and i'm going to correct them before we continue with the demo so the first one is in the employee authentication lambda function so let's go to the lambda console and if we look at here dynamodb we have a typo here it should be resource i mean stand r here so i'm going to add it back here and then the second place within this lambda is in here when we extract the first name and last name it should be camel case here so lowercase f and lowercase l because in our dynamo db we define them as camel case like this and then the third place within this lambda is that this return statement here it should be outside of the for loop so it should be a line here so we're gonna do one indentation to the left because if in the response in the recognition call here search for face by image if nothing matches within our collection it's not gonna get into for loop and it's not gonna return anything which is not what we want and those are the three mistakes I made in the code uh, in this Lambda. So I'm going to hit deploy to save the corrections. And now the second mistake I made in the code was in the React app. So let's get there. And the mistakes was over here. So in here, when we try to set the image based on the user selection of the image, we say that it's e.target.file. Um, it should be files. And that is it. Those are the mistakes I made and I just corrected them. And now let's continue with the demo. Okay, so hopefully we don't make any mistakes. Okay, so the look of it looks good. Uh, we have our title here and then we can choose a file and hit authenticate. And uh, right now, obviously, it's not authenticated. Nothing is there. So say, OK, please upload image uh, to authenticate. And this is our placeholder for image. Right now, we are ready to test it out. So before this tutorial, I prepared some uh, uh, visitor images that we can test out. So let's first upload that to our visitor directory first. Test it out. So visitor number, visitor number one, it says 
Hi, Bill Gates. Welcome to work. Hopefully, I uh, hope you have a productive day today. And you can see that Bill Gates is Bill Gates, but it's a different picture than the ones that we have in our database. Um, and then visitor number two, which is Sanjay Pachai, and is able to identify is Sanjay Pachai, and it's one of our employees. And visitor number three. Uh, it's Drake. Um, obviously, Drake is famous, but he's not one of our employees. So it's going to say that authentication failed, and this person is not an employee. So we don't allow them to get in, and the text changed to be red. And then number four, Elon Musk, and obviously it was able to identify as one of our employees. And then visitor number five. Is Brad Pitt, um, even though Brad Pitt is handsome, but we but he's not one of our employees, so authentication fail, and we don't allow them to get into our office. Uh, so it seems like everything's working fine now, and it's able to identify who is our employee that we have the data in our database, and who is not an employee, and authentication fail. And this is it. Uh, this is everything that you need to do to build your facial recognition app. Um, it's pretty simple, and it's pretty powerful as well. And I hope you've learned something in this tutorial. And if you like this tutorial, I hope you can give it a thumbs up. And I'll see you in the next video.